Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Cindy and I had a great weekend. We went out and uh, got some tandem surfing done the other day. Beautiful, beautiful waves. And then uh, yesterday, my son's, my son Jeremiah's birthday, and uh, we went out and golfed, uh, golfed yesterday. I played one round with him. I think he played a total of four rounds yesterday. So that's how he chose to celebrate his birthday. But coming to you from the beautiful tropical paradise of Waikiki, we're right next to St. Augustine's Catholic Church. If you're ever in the area, uh, you should go to our website, uh, bearschoolofmanliness.com, and uh, fill out the contact form so we can get together and have some coffee. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we have a new book out, by the way. It's it's Twelve Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? Uh, it's a great book. Men love this book because uh, who, who, who uh, men are just really attracted to the whole cowboy um, myth and legend. Uh, uh, and I know so many cowboys in my real life. In fact, one cowboy I know is actually my wife. She's a cowgirl. She's been uh, she was a bell bell racer back in the day and. Uh, Raised, uh, raised uh, with horses. So uh, she kind of helped inspire the book, 12 Rules for Manliness. So I'm going to read to you uh, a little excerpt from the book before we get rolling. This is uh, about having a personal creed and a code. Cowboys were perceptive and decisive. Part of their ease in making decisions was because they knew what they stood for, and they also knew how to make a stand. They knew what they believed, and they lived by a personal creed and the cowboy code. They were quick to act when needed. They were clever but not conniving. To them it was simple to understand what needed to be done even though the doing of it may not be easy. And when push came to shove, they could not be shoved. So um, yeah, I, part, of, part of why I, uh, cowboys were decisive was because they already had made up their mind about things ahead of time. Uh, there's a, they always refer to the cowboy code. It's not really written down, but there's a lot of cowboy thoughts about you know how how you should live a live your life and so when it came down to push comes to shove it wasn't hard for them to decide where they needed to stand and that's with us as catholics we need to be, be informed so that we can be formed and reading through the catechism on it reading one page day in the, of the daily catechism of the of the catholic catechism really helps in that in that regard so that when it comes down to it you can choose the true good you know the true good and you can pursue the true good through self donation so uh, i guess we would just say cowboy up so that's from the book 12 rules for man on this where have all the cowboys gone but now we have i don't know kind of an unenergetic boring person's going to be on our show at this time it's going to be one of those people i'm going to have to drag through the interview see if i can pull anything out of her but you know her and you love her dr colleen kelly mast she's an author speaker life coach and radio yeah you actually are a personality you know there's a lot of people that say they're radio personalities but Kat, colleen actually is a personality <laughs> She currently speaks on family life issues throughout the world and hosts a syndicated call-in radio advice show on more than 500 Catholic radio stations via our beloved EWTN network and Sirius Catholic Radio. So, Dr. Colleen Kelly Mast, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank <laughs> you. It's great to be here. I even have my old little card. Oh, you do? From wow. when we first met, maybe at a radio conference. And yeah. I bought five copies of 12 Rules for Manliness. Oh, and thank gave you. to my son's son-in-laws, my husband, that was their Christmas gift. <laughs> That's so cool. You know, I, I remember that. I think it's, I, I remember going to an, a, a conference, a radio conference in Alabama. And I remember, I think we were on the bus sitting next to each other. And I was, I was going through my discovery. I had started to develop a radio concept. And I was just going out there just kind of learning. And you just made me feel so welcome and, and so loved. And I remember Bishop Baker was so gracious to us. And so he was wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah he really encouraged me. So and we were right there. Uh, Mother Angelica was actually still alive back in those days. I don't know. That was probably 10 or 11 years ago. It was a while ago. But I just remember you stood out and you really made me feel 
welcome. And it's about time. I don't think we. I've. I've. I don't know if I've ever been on your show. I don't think I've ever had you on my show. It's ridiculous. I have. I have you on my show to talk about your new book. Oh well, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, and just that's, a, after that show is when I bought all my copies. Yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, like all my listeners. You got to give this to your sons, son-in-laws, godsons, nieces, nephews, children for Christmas, and a lot of them did. They emailed That's me. That's so and said cool. That they did because well, you know what hit number five? In, me. It hit number five in, uh, in Christian books, Christian men's books. So that was cool. But no, I mean, I, I mean, it took you and I both this long. It took us this long. No, I, I was been on your show. Now you're on my show. But, I know. Uh, but we're we love you. And we're glad to have. We're so glad to have you on the show. And uh, so tell us, tell us, um, Colleen, a little bit about you in this segment. Then I want to get into. We're going to have a conversation about fathers and sons and your whole book, okay. the Love Ed book uh, book series. Okay. Yeah, we can talk specifically about love ed um so you want me to tell just about all my other books now or just i want to hear about your testimony and then your other books and then you got to do it all in the next six minutes because that's our first break okay all right um how did i get into this certainly someone who came of age in the 70s would not have had be a chastity educator on their list of things to do it was not even Mm -hmm. an option right then Um, but i was second oldest of nine children and my mother had the most beautiful answers to whatever questions we would ask her. I had a sister that was 13 months older than I am. And if you can do any counting there, I wasn't planned by my parents. They thought you couldn't get pregnant while you were breastfeeding. So um, after I recovered from the Planned Parenthood brainwashing that every child should be a planned child, I realized that Guess who planned me? Yeah, God, God. had a plan. Yeah, God right. planned me. He knew me before I was born. He mm. knit me in my mother's womb. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And now Planned Parenthood is fearful of me. I've been on their top 10 hit list before <laughs> and sex respect came out. So I had this beautiful education where my mom would tell us these wonderful little stories. Like my sister asked her, mom, what's a honeymoon for? Okay, we're seven years old and six years old. This is how age appropriate she was. She said, mom, or she, so, so she goes, well, what, what is a honeymoon? And like, what's it for? And so my mom says, a honeymoon is now that you're married in a new family, you can go on vacation together. And when you're on vacation together, you're gonna practice getting dressed and undressed in the same room because you might be embarrassed a little bit at the first because you, you, know, you don't get undressed with people that aren't in your family. Okay, wonderful explanation that carried me through life. Wait a minute, some- you're eight, 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 when you're eight years old, you should be knowing about gender and, and uh, <laughs> you know, L, LG, LGB <laughs> alphabet stuff, right? I'm too old for that. No, but I she, missed it. But, she, but it's <laughs> wonderful, isn't it? Because I, I, honestly, Colleen, I did not know the facts of life until I was probably in seventh grade or sixth grade. My dad took me aside and we went up hiking by a creek and he talked story with me. I had no idea. I was blown away. That's what mm-hmm. that's that's the way I think God intended it to be, and now it's like there's a full-on attack yes. on us. They, it they, should be. You sh- we should protect. And one of the chapters of my Love Ed Parents Guide is innocent but not ignorant. We should know enough. Like I know what a honeymoon's for. I know I'm not supposed to get dressed when I'm dressed with somebody when I'm not married. So when I'm on a date and the guy starts playing with my top button, and I'm like, get out of here. This is not a honeymoon. You're not undressing me at all. Like mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> I spent three hours getting ready. If you think you're going to mess any of this up, you're sadly mistaken. <laughs> and so, so I had that foundation. And and she would tell us, you know, we had like ask her, how did the baby get out? And she says, God miraculously opens the womb and the the baby slides out. So she had these very positive, right, innocent, beautiful answers to things. And so when uh, my friends and I were deciding what to do about the pro life movement, one of my friends was working at Birthright, and God called me to like prevent this way back in the beginning Mm. let's respect our power to give light Mm -hmm. so that we respect the power of the male the power of the female the relationship of male female we respect marriage itself and we know that this beautiful act that god designed to bring a husband and wife together and bond them together in love and bring children into the world was designed only for marriage, to renew the marriage vows after you took them, not mm-hmm. to go on vacation or cohabit beforehand. So then, um, so that's when I began teaching very strongly in the classes that I taught. And again, those are longer stories of how God gave me all my different jobs. He's um, g- given me all of the work that I have and more than I need. But uh, so then I wrote Sex Respect. I wrote. Um, but what's your yeah. website called again? It is. Oh. Respectforyou.com. With, respect a, with, a, with the number four. 
respect. The number four, the respect, the number yeah. four, the letter U.com. So I wrote a public school book um, for back when people were opening all those school based clinics and things like that called Sex Respect that teaches abstinence from a secular health perspective. I have a master's degree in health education, so I could debate. I've debated the ACLU. I've debated the president of Planned Parenthood. I've debated the Sex Education Information Council of the United States because I can talk to them on their level of educational objectives, and they just fall because they are putting political propaganda in the schools, and I was teaching health. And there's nothing healthy about altering a girl's hormonal chemistry well, so she can be used by a boy who cannot handle himself okay we're gonna we gotta take a break remember i told you i was gonna have to interrupt you i i know i'm you, glad you, every now and then i interview you a show, i'll just talk okay yeah, okay <laughs> uh she talks about uh 80 miles an hour but she gusts to 160 i think but we're, we're talking with dr colleen mast we're going to be coming back to talk story more about what the, the, this subject of sexuality and then we're going to talk about fathers and sons colleen where can they find you what's your website you mentioned in a moment Respect. ago the number four, the letter U. Respect the number four, the letter U. Respect for you.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Schoolofmanliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together, to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the Man Cave, which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned now. Here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, my wife always says, start off um, the show by making the sign of the cross in Hawaiian, which I neglected to do. So I'm going to do that now. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Cindy and I are up to uh, no good. We're doing, we're doing um, new things on our YouTube channel, the Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure YouTube channel. You've got all of our radio shows there in the Zoom video format. We've got the 60-second uh, little uh, shorts that they do on YouTube, so you can share them with your friends that my sons Shane and Josh do. They're great little excerpts from my book and cowboy-themed AI-generated uh, 60 second shorts uh, and but Cindy and I are going to start doing this this new thing the spirit of adventure uh, videos uh, here in here in the tropical beauty of Hawaii and when we're we sail on our boat the spirit of adventure uh, you can come along with us so go to Bear Wozniak YouTube channel Bear Wozniak spirit of adventure and just subscribe there and we'll uh, we'll push out uh, some things to you uh, several times a week some things that you're going to really uh, enjoy and and uh, also want to pass along to your friends. We have as our guest today uh, Dr. Colleen Kelly Mast. Uh, she has her radio show uh, heard once a week on the EWT Network, Mast Appeal. What time do they hear that show, East Coast time? East Coast time would be 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. 
It's funny, guys. Okay, good. Okay, so um, Colleen is talking to us about this, this. What's happened now, Colleen, is is there's an invasion against innocence. You know, oh, and, and these poor kids oh. are taught. Oh. Are things are being told to them that they d can't process. And, exactly. uh, and then and then in the and then they're saying, oh, you, you you're a tomboy. You need to have you need to have gender. You need hormone replacement or something. You I know? know, thank God and my wife didn't do that. Do my, play <laughs> my wife, my wife was a tough. Ch I call her TC. She's a tough chick. You know, she's a rodeo girl, uh, but she's the most beautiful, elegant woman. You know, thank God no one tr got a hold of her when she was young like that. You know, it's just yeah. tell us about that. You, you are you are you have you been having uh, debates along that line now, too, because you're of your education background? Yes, certainly. And there are a lot more questions. When I speak, like yesterday, I gave a confirmation retreat at a local parish. When I give speaking in Love Ed presentations, actually in the new Love Ed Parent Guide, I had to address gender confusion and what the church teaches about it and how to accept your body as it is. But um, you're right, it's very difficult because one girl in the retreat I gave yesterday said, what do you do if you're in school and you have a friend that think she's the, you know, think she's a boy, how do you respond? And those were questions we never would even have thought of when we were little. Things have changed so much um, from when I wrote Sex Respect, even from my, when I wrote Love and Life, the Christian Sexual Morality Guide for Teens, that when we realized kids had to, to have more information, but not harmful information. Information has still kept them innocent, but not ignorant back at younger ages is why I end up developing Love Ed. So Love Ed is a, a revolutionary new approach about puberty, adolescence, God's plan for human sexuality, so that a parish or a church doesn't say, okay, we'll talk to your kids and we'll send home a flyer for the parents. No, this conversation needs to empower the parent because the parent is there every day. The parent is living in this confused culture just as much as the kids are. And the parent is going to have to respond and educate as you go along. So the child, particularly boys who like to put things in their mental boxes, like okay, I can put mm -hmm. this away in my box because I know where it belongs. Mm -hmm. This belongs to marriage. I don't have to worry about it now. That guy must be confused, but I know my science, I know my theology, I know what God wants of me. And so he can, this little boy then at puberty or right after puberty can be at rest thinking, my dad talked to me about that. My dad knows what he's doing. I see those other guys are a little bit confused. So there's, that's why that, confused. yes, I'm sorry. I, that's why this, these books are like, are like workbooks really. You can put them into the parents' hands and then it gives them the traction and the knowledge they need and how to get, get the conversation going and, and how to answer all those really tough questions. Exactly. What do you say? You know, how do you help them grow into the next chapter of their life? So instead of just the facts of life and just that talk, this is the facts of life within the meaning of life. Like, mm. what does life mean? How do you grow in virtue? When these changes are taking place in your body during puberty, what virtues do you need to grow in, you mm. know, for this or this kind of result? How do I manage my emotions? How do I manage my anger? And so we help the, the, the parent, we empower the parent to help the child through these pitfalls so they don't have to learn from their own mistakes and like be ahead of the curve parents. be ahead of the curve on it you know don't wait for them to ask by that by that time that's already hey why don't you just hold up these different books that you have and give it a title so people know and when we say love ed it's really loved the way it's written on on amazon is l-o-v-e-d one word loved but with an emphasis on the ed the education part the show education. us show us the titles in the books it's okay well, first of all, we have, um, I mentioned Sex Respect. That's my public school abstinence book. I'm in the middle of revising it now again to update some of the, so much of the information. So that's for high school kids. And, um, and there's a parent guide that goes with it as well. So they have conversations about like dating, you know, and what's going on. And uh, so it's value-based. And then this is Love and Life, a Christian Sexual Morality Guide for Teens, a student workbook and a parent's guide. And the wow. student work talks about the, like the difference between how male and female think differently and how do you overcome the temptations? You know, what is the theology of the body? What is our real source of life? You know, how does God help us through all these things? And how do you know if you're ready to date? Like when, what is dating for? What's the whole purpose of dating anyway? And uh, how do we practice modesty and chastity? And then the nitty gritty is, you know, in the parent's guide is more biology um, a little more science, more theology. Like, how? What if your kid is already 
uh, offending some of the sixth commandment, like masturbation or things like that, what would you tell him? How would you talk to your child? How would you explain birth control to a child that first asks you that question? So those kind of things are in the love and life. That's more for eighth or high, high school. And so then comes my program that I recently finished that has videos and books because mm-hmm. we're, our kids are more visual learners these days. Right. Mm-hmm. Is Love Ed. And so there's a parent's guide of Love Ed that covers, first of all, how do you how do you reconcile doing this if you didn't live it yourself the first time around? So I start with King David, <laughs> right mm-hmm. in the introduction, like, mm-hmm. you know, if God can forgive David right. from not only lust, adultery, power, pride, and then killing the husband (laughs) of the woman he got pregnant. Yeah, right. And he still let Jesus come from that family. He's more merciful than we are. So so I think if he could forgive David, no matter what any of the dads out here have done in their past, they can teach love ed to their kids and bring the Savior to their children. So, So this talks about... The, in the God's plan for mercy, you plead guilty and you're forgiven. It's the opposite of our culture plan. You plead guilty and you get punished. And then it talks about the um, the different levels of education because there's a different conversation you have with children that are age one through seven. Very, very innocent, very simple, indirect language. A different conversation you have between seven and 11 before puberty. Again, a little bit more information, still very innocent. And then at puberty, a different level of conversation. Then after puberty, another level of conversation. So I have the parent's guide would cover everything from age three through 14. So if you have a son who's just a couple years old, just found himself in the bathtub and starting to play for it with himself. Or you have a 14 year old that is saying, oh, mom, that's not that bad. Everybody's doing it. This, the Love Ed Parents Guide will guide you through all of those. And it has so many beautiful things that help you gain that sacred language that you need. Like, how would you describe the marriage act in scriptural terms? Well, this uses the feast of the Um, Annunciation, it uses the Feast of the Incarnation, it uses the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. What's the difference between the Immaculate Conception and the Virgin Birth when you're confused on that gospel, on that feast? Mm -hmm. So it it uses the scriptures to help you say, what does it mean to know someone? And then how Jesus had a divine father and Mary was, uh, did conceive uh, Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit, but that's not how everybody else is conceived. This is how the other humans uh, are. Yeah, you know, very so well. It, yeah, yeah, because that's right. Because as a child, I was just like, I guess it just when two people love each other, then this happens. I and thought, that's the way it was explained to me. Yeah. yeah. Like but so yeah, this makes a, yeah, that makes the difference. That's what yeah. I thought happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I remember, so, asking, I remember asking my mother once, uh, uh, how do you know when you're in love with someone? You know, yes. I mean, you know, like she said, well, you, they, and my mom and dad were in the car together. When you're, you'll know, you'll know, when, you'll know when you know. Actually, uh, we, I ask, answer those questions yeah. in my book, both in life and love ed. And, 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 and yeah, and the difference between a crush or, or whatever and what real love is and be, and, and choosing your mate well. Uh, is is a there's got to be that part. There's the feeling part, but there's the thinking part. We're talking with Dr. Colleen Mast. It's so so sad. I try to drag this information out of her. She's so uh, coy and 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 unresponsive. But but I didn't uh, even get to all the books yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like so. What do you do in your spare time uh, between two a.m. and four a.m.? I well, I you know you're so busy. Uh, of course, if you're part of the new evangelization in the Catholic Church, there's a saying: Mary had a little lamb and never became a sheep. It became part of the new evangelization and died of lack of sleep. That's kind of, and Colleen and I started out the conversation about saying how the joy of the Lord is our strength, and that is true. Uh, not by might, not by power, but by His Holy Spirit. We'll be right back with Colleen, Dr. Colleen Kelly Mass and the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Announcing Spirit Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. So many people, especially you mama bears, tell us we want more of Bear and Cindy together. Well, we're happy to announce our website, spiritofadventuretv.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you can watch Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. Join us where we live in the Hawaiian Islands or where we sail our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean. Experience both adventure and serenity with us. 
as we share our life together, as well as the joy and the wisdom of our faith. Go to spiritofadventuretv.com to find out more and subscribe on YouTube to Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure. And join us, Spirit of Adventure, with Bear and Cindy. Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? The Great Cosmic Chasm. Disordered passion is simply an out of control drivenness, an unbridled excessive wanting for a true good that God created for us, but it goes too far and becomes out of control. It is a drivenness to have more and more of something in a way that can never really satisfy. One of the early church fathers, you know who they are, they look a little bit like ZZ Top. He wrote that a man that just seeks pleasure is like someone walking down the street eating air and all he's do is filling himself with more emptiness. That great cosmic chasm in our heart is actually an infinitely large chasm because it's meant to be a temple, it's meant to be a house for an infinite eternal God. But being the gentleman that God is, He will not force His way into that chamber of our heart. We must seek Him and respond to Him and open the door to our heart. Do you hear Him knocking? Buy 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? at schoolofmanliness.com or wherever books are sold. Mama Bears, get these books into the hands of your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com and subscribe to our weekly email to receive video YouTube links of the Bear Wozniak radio show, as well as the Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy TV show, which, by the way, is filmed in the tropics as well as our manly evangelistic YouTube shorts. Go to schoolofmanliness.com. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure Committee from Waikiki Beach. I want to let you guys know my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? I really love this book because it's it's a kind of a book like uh, conversation the way men would have a conversation. Uh, it's not too old of a book for a kid that's, you know, confirmation age and older. Uh, but it's like the way men talk to each other. It's, we talk about things from the Catholic perspective, from a cr Christian perspective, but it's also just the kind of things you wouldn't, like I spoke at a men's conference uh, the other day in, in Tampa Bay, and they said, come and talk to us about Catholic masculinity, and I said, no. I'll come if you let me talk about Catholic manliness. And so they changed the whole conference title because the word, m word man comes from the Latin word ver, which means virtue. And so this is just this is like the way guys talk to each other. This book, and it's the way a father, uh, a lot of fathers pick up this book and they read it to their younger to their sons too, so they can get traction and talk about uh, some of the real gritty things about what it means to be a man. And so we're real fortunate because today we have Dr. Colleen Kelly Mass with us, and she's also created. You know, we've kind of been on the same page in some ways in our writing lately. You have a book that's meant for father sons. Uh, but you were talking about all of your books. I don't want to skip any, but we're going to get to this book on okay, on the father it. son, right? Tell all right, us. is that forever going next? So we're just finishing up the the parent guide. It'll help you explain, you know, pornography and why that's a problem, or the difference between love and lust, and um, in at every different age level for your child. But then when your child gets to the point where they're starting to ask questions and they're approaching puberty, but they're really not interested yet. And they're wondering like, is there a problem with me that I'm not interested in girls yet? All I want to do is make the basketball team. And you know, how do you calm that down? So that's where I have uh, Love Ed level one for boys, boys that are strong, smart, and pure. And then a father son book of Love Ed level two for boys that are strong, smart, and pure. And what this does, first of all, there's a set of videos that goes with the first segment of the book. So there, there are five different video clips that they can watch stream free after they buy the book. And then they work along the exercises in the book with their son. And the five different videos take make this conversation so easy for you, Dad. The fathers love it. The first conversation is so simple and easy. It's a story about 
well, two different stories, whether it's level one or level two, it might be about bullying, it might be about family, it might be about the level two is having a crush on a girl. And so they look at this video, see what's the difference between the chores I have to do and the chores that guy have to do, or our family and their family. So it's simply bringing them into the, the idea of family life. Then act two, the video will um, address what is love, like what is family love, what is friendship love, what virtues make uh, up love like what virtues do I have to grow in now so I'll know I'll I'll develop my spiritual muscles called virtues that's so cool so that that's so person. important because you know the old, when we were young you and I it was the feel good movement if feel good if it feels good do it bad advice <laughs> bad advice you know so then would... we talk about chastity there and the third one is about God's love and how the theology of the body works that the mankind sin we and we see the effects of our sin it wrecks relationships you know it wrecks marriages and you know and so the result of sin and then Jesus saving us and that's the third um, act and then the fourth act is the science of life and for the younger boys it's the changes in puberty that take place and what virtues they need to grow in, how to respond or not respond to changes that take place. And level two of the science video for the, the boys, like sixth, seventh, eighth grade, is again, the facts of life within the meaning of life, how life develops. And it is so beautiful and delicate that a boy will walk, walk out of there with his dad g closer than they walked in because they have this conversation after each video. And so many dads have said, I've never had such substantive conversations with my son in his life. There you but go. But the questions yeah. are all written for you and the hard stuff's on the video, so it's made so simple. Well, we, we really need to ha have this uh, link for you. You and I need to talk off air about how we can get the men in the man cave connected with what you're doing there. But how can, how, yeah, how can people, how can people uh, connect with this? What's your website? Oh, respect, the number four, the letter U, respect for you dot com respect for you dot com and they'll want to get a, a parent love ed parents guide a love ed if your boys 9 10 11 12 uh love ed fathers and sons boys that are strong smart and pure level one if your boys 12 13 14 15 you'll want to get a father and son boys that are strong smart smart and pure if they're older you want to get a love and life book well, yeah, and they, they can find all that at, the, at your website. You know, the, thing, the thing about it is um, we have to really be ahead of the curve now. Uh, we have to find a way to talk about sexuality and with young children without, with, like you said, not keeping them ignorant, keeping them innocent but not ignorant. And, um, and young, younger men are, there, there's two things happening, and I see there's younger men are under full-on attack from pornography. They have got to, they've got to learn how to battle that uh, mm -hmm. and know why it's important. The other thing is, th th you know, I'm not surprised that there's so much gender confusion now because for 40 years, feminists have, telling, have been telling women that they can become men, right? That's basically it. If you want to yeah. be, a, you're, you're a woman, uh, and, and so the ultimate femininity for you is to be a CEO of a corporation or, or, or you, know, you know, basically it's telling women they can, act, they can be men. You, whatever a man can do, I can do better type of stuff. And it brought so much, it, it didn't, it didn't uh, empower women. It, 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 it um, confused the situation. Now it's becoming an actual fact that people, are, more and more people are saying, well, I think I'm a, I think I'm a man or I think I'm women, even though they were, they're, they're, not, they're not born that way. And look and at so, what TV shows have done over the last, 15 or 20 years they bashed men they made men look like doofuses they they made them look so weak that these boys are growing up like cowboy what's a cowboy you know like yeah. they, they're trying to hide from women and, and masculine men because they don't know what they're supposed to be and yet right. if you approach your son with confidence with goodness with truth with beauty and talk to them about what god's plan really is he can rise to that occasion right so that sex doesn't become something dirty it's like wow this is a beautiful expression of a husband committing mm -hmm. his life to his wife and uniting together to bring new life into the world that we respect from the moment of conception. And the boys, and when they see the science video, there's no doubt in their mind that there can be no homosexual marriage. We don't even have to discuss it because we have two different sets of reproductive organs and they cannot unite. Right. It's impossible to have a union. <laughs> so what the church isn't against marriage, your body's against homosexual marriage. You know? Right, 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 right. It doesn't right. happen. Well, let me ask you this. This is a little bit. I have noticed more and more, though, that it's really hard for a, a young man to find a young woman that is um, 
that it brings the qualities into the marriage that he wants. I, I, I'm, I, me personally, I am not looking for a woman who's successful and has a career and makes a lot of money and is independent. And I, I, that's not what I don't think most men, what they want in a woman is a woman that um, is powerful. All the Louis Lamore Westerns, a woman was powerful. But like when I'm going to have to raise kids yeah, and not, deliver them. Instead of me say, talking, you talk. I, I see you, you know, you know where I'm going. Tell, tell, tell what, what are your thoughts about the young men, the problem they have trying to find a woman these days. That's, that's right. Actually, I have two single sons in their early 30s. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I understand the problem. You're right. That women, many women today have bought the lie <clears throat> that they have to be powerful. They have to be influential. They have to be wealthy. And maybe children will be an aside, like a charm I'll wear later you can tack on. tack it on like an, an accessory. Exactly. Like an accessory, like the, the latest thousand dollar purse. After I get that and uh, have my trip around the world, then maybe I'll think of having a child for the next part of my checklist. And they don't realize that the fulfillment of the person is be, is bringing joy to the next generation, that Amen. your love comes alive in a whole new person. And so when a young man is looking for a woman today, it's hard to find someone. You can find them. A lot of homeschool groups, a lot of smaller towns where you can find a woman that is you know, prepared to be a good, strong mother, a good, strong disciplinarian of the children, a good support system for the husband. So they, they there are so few real men and real women out there that they are. It's hard for them to connect. It's, Maybe it, at CatholicMatch.com or something. It's, it's yes, exactly, Colleen. It's 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 scary because most women are don't start to have children. I'll tell her in their thirties. And then all of a sudden, guess what? They're in their 40s and they can't. And they say there's that, that the, you know, when I was married, first of all, I, I've, I, my first married marriage didn't work. I, you know, 20 years, really difficult season in my life. And I and, uh, won't go into that, but it was the Catholic Church annulled it. Uh, but I know on that wedding night, I was a virgin, you know, and I was married when I was 23. <laughs> and I, I first child when I was 24. Now people are putting off marriage till 29, 30. Um, they've had how many sexual partners before their marriage? So much confusion is brought on. And uh, so, you know what I love is when, I, when we, were, we were in Napa and someone asked, maybe you were there, I'm not sure, there was a conference in Napa. I don't remember if you were there, but Archbishop Chaput was there and they, someone asked him, what's a really good evangelistic program that we can use? Were you there? I don't know, but I saw the quote. Yeah, the quote. Yeah, and he and he said and he said, uh, g get married, have lots of children, bring them up in the Lord. And so, guess what? Uh, Christians are going to win. Catholics are going to win just by virtue of the fact that we're getting married younger, we have lots exactly. of children, and we bring them up in the Lord. But uh, you know, we got to go. We got to take a break again, real quick. Uh, Colleen, work, Doctor Colleen Mast, where can they find you? What's your website? Respect for you dot com. Respect the number four, the letter U dot com. I love that. It's so cool because it's it's. I love it. I love it. The title. We'll talk about it when we come back. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. My newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has hit the top five in Christian books for a good reason. It's because men are searching for traction and a trail guide to live out the unique calling and the gifts 
that they were born with, that each man individually is factory loaded with by God. Paul said, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, do all things in love. Finally, here is a book that talks with men the way men talk with each other. Just plain old straight shoot. By the way, Mama Bears, this is your chance to get this message to your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com or anywhere books are sold. 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to bearsschoolofmanliness.com, become a member of Bear's Man Cave. Uh, we're having a Zoom meetup about every two or three weeks with all the members of the cave, and then there's a three-year curriculum there for you. The School of Manliness, which you can participate with with other men. We, we're right now we're on month year two, month two of the curriculum. We go through that together as men. There's audio, there's video, there's written content, there's self-assessments, there's goal setting. Uh, that you can do with us other men, and also you can lead your sons through it, too. Um, BearSchoolOfManliness.com. We're talking with Dr. Colleen uh, Kelly Mast. She's author of a whole series of books called Love Ed. It's the word love with a capital E and D at the end for education. So th this is where it's coming to is this, the, the, every, the, the um, it's like the train, the wheels are coming off the train um, in our society right now because of the breakdown in, in, in our um in our society, and I, I think it goes back to Humana Vitae, you know, praise God for Huma, Humana Vitae and, and St. John Paul II's writings on the theology of the body. The reason why people make fun of men is because they should be made fun of, because they are weak, because they are seeking pleasure, they're not seeking responsibility, and we, we shouldn't act like victims. We let it happen. When, we, when John Paul II wrote about love and responsibility, uh, that's what makes a man. And love is seeking the true good through self-donation, Aquinas slash John Paul II combined. That's what love is. And so when you're, if you're a man who's seeking pleasure, that's what Thomas Aquinas uh, said, basically to paraphrase him, that's what an effeminate man is, is a man who just seeks his own pleasure. But what makes you a man is taking on responsibility and through self-donation, as we say in Hawaii, kuleana, uh, uh, giving, giving uh, taking stewardship over areas of your life. And when men started just seeking out pleasure instead of love, uh, and, and didn't wait until the marriage bed to, to, to start having sex, the world exploded. And so what's happening now is we need, we need for men to stand up, to be strong, and to, and to uh, seek out a good woman, find a good woman. Hard to do. Ask your parents' friends. <laughs> Ask your parents to help you find yes. a good woman. That's the way it used to be done. Go to church. Join a young a theology on tap group or something. But... Um, God has a plan for your life. He, he says, I know what I have in store for you, plans for peace, not destruction. A future reserve you full of hope. If you seek me, I'll let you find me. If you seek me with all your heart. So seek the Lord and then put yourself in a position to meet this young lady. And then when you meet her, ask her out on a date. <laughs> it's hard. It's really hard these days. The, the sweep right, sweep left, right, Colleen? Uh, the, the, the hookup uh, uh, yeah. culture is just devastating. So what do we do? What do the men and young men and women do? Right. The hookup culture is just about using people. So mm. I like how you said that men um, who are seeking pleasure instead of responsibility. And this is the, the downfall of this whole culture. A lot of the problems that we have, a lot of the, the people that are in prison are because they did not have a good father. And so this so whole sad. downfall yeah. of, of manliness of manning up, of taking responsibility and blaming somebody else or just abandoning these women. And the, the pro-life movement is spending hours and thousands and millions of dollars trying to pick up the pieces where men have failed. Oh my they, gosh. They slept with a woman and abandoned her. And now we have a whole slew of, chi of um, fatherless children. And this cr is creating huge society problems. So for men to take responsibility right now, wherever they are in their life, and educate their sons on how to be pure, practice self-discipline, know what love is, mm. wait until marriage, do not live together with this girl before you're married, get a good job, 
become virtuous, work hard, provide for a family so that if you're if you want to have a lot of kids, you can do that and still eat and buy a bicycle every couple of years. I, and yeah. so the yes. men stepping up yeah. are going to change the world. They're going to change the whole culture. And the only church that has everything lined up is the Catholic Church, Amen. the only church that gets the whole big picture. And if you've heard Father Robert Spitzer in his book on uh, the moral teachings of the Catholic Church, you know that statistically... They're all right there. They're all up there. All right. <laughs> statistically, yes, I love it. I'm giving a talk on that um, in a couple of days. Um, statistically, people who do not follow the Catholic teachings in all these different areas, you know, whether it's abortion or contraception or cohabitation or homosexuality, they, the people that don't follow the church teachings have greater mental illness, they have more alcoholism, they have more depression, they have um, more problems. So God really does know what he's doing. He knows what makes us happy. God loves us, and he loves us so much. He gave us a path, a guide to have some of his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. He wanted us to experience the joy and fulfillment of family life and share in his uh, power of co-creating new life. Amen. And we're like, oh, no, sorry, God, we don't like that. We just But you know what? Life. Like like the, like the voice you just used. Oh, God, we don't need. You know what? Ha <laughs> you know what happens if you don't live a life of heroic virtue is you feel I hate to use the word, but you feel yucky. You know, mm -hmm. a man who doesn't work hard and isn't productive, he's yes. missing out on on, on, on that scent of, of iron that comes into your soul when you do. It's a great pleasure, for example, to, to, to work out. Just resistance training, whether it's at the gym or just in life, makes your soul feel so good. And when you don't take responsibility and you use others, you feel shame, ashamed and and. I just think the word is yucky. You feel like a, ugh. So, so, yeah. so it, this God, you know, Aristotle said the pursuit of happiness is good. Our founding father said the pursuit of happiness is good. And Jesus said, be happy. If you do this, you'll be happy. God wants you to be happy. You're factory loaded to, to, to live life in a certain way. And when you fulfill that, you're going to feel good, really good inside. Exactly. And that's where that fulfillment comes. And that's where that joy comes, even in the struggle. And that joy mm -hmm. is so deep that even the martyrs didn't mind being martyred because they've done what they needed to do. They were strong on the inside. They stayed connected to God. And you can get through any hardship in life when you're connected to God. And family life isn't that hard. There are hardships. There are hurdles. There are mountains to climb. Um, but if you become the right person first and select the right person, right. marry the right person mm -hmm. and do those right things, those steps toward being a virtuous person, loving, forgiving, merciful, kind, thoughtful, a self donation, giving of yourself, sacrificing yourself for the good of the others. Mm. How we say in the video for the little kids, what is love? Sacrificing yourself for the good of others. If you mm. see your life as a, a husband and father sacrifice himself for the good of others, you will have that deep joy that you couldn't have experienced when you sought pleasure. And I yes. see this in my life coaching business. Men who are struggling, it's quite often they didn't follow God's path. Women who are so regretful, they followed the world's view instead of God's view. And they're very sad and they don't know what to do about it because you can't go backwards. Yeah, it's so too late. These young yeah. men, the young men you're training, the young men that are listening, realize you just get one chance at life. Yeah, you get a lot of forgiveness along the way, but you if you mess up with love, you can taint your whole life with sadness. Mm. And you have to come back from under the ground and dig yourself back out. So why not let's train our sons the first time in virtue to make the right choices um, and then that they can be the generation that changes the world so that we can bring... I believe in this generation. I was just in Montana. Oh, yeah. I went to four different colleges, spoke to you know, the young men and women, but took had the men just by myself. These young men, these Catholic young men, they want to be challenged. Just show me yeah. how to do it, you know, and I, and, I'll, and, I, and I will, you know, I'll, I'll put my hand to the plow and I'll set my face like Flint and I'll do it, you know. So I believe in this younger generation and I think the Catholic formation in what it means to be, you know, 
just the anthropology of what it means to be a human being. But I'll yeah. tell you one thing, Colleen. We're gonna, we're running out of time. I'm going to give you one more minute. But I absolutely, I'm going to send you. An, and we had we had some mix up on our schedules, and we had technical <laughs> issues. But we got together. But I'm going to send you an email. I want to get you back on soon, so we can talk <laughs> get get deeper into this. Uh, what's your last minute of of of, of wisdom? For our, for our audience. Oh, I want to give men back their confidence. The Love Ed program can help you do that. So Love Ed, building boys that are strong, smart, and pure, the parent's guide. You will be amazed. You'll be inspired. You'll be empowered. And if you watch these videos and work through these books together, you will grow yourself. You Most men say, I wish I would have had this course when I was 12 or 15 or whatever. Well, but now they can uh, provide this for their own sons and build a relationship a good close relationship about important sacred topics with their son using love ed facilitating these conversations hey man you know you know what i think i'd like to do is we have so many mom we call them mama bears i used to have a cabin up in montana and i i was cindy and i were praying what should we call all those women that are love our ministry and cindy mm -hmm. said we should call them mama bears because they're they're tough you know they and and they, they they protect their young and then the next day my oldest son walks in and goes hey dad remember how those mama bears were in glacier park how tough they how because we've come across them they can be scary you know women love testosterone we <laughs> are attracted to manly men <laughs> well, we'll, and so that's built in us we're attracted our estrogen attracts to their testosterone and they and they but the women want to want to get the message to their men uh, but exactly. but we need to, but they need a place where they can go to get the message too as far as what their role is with. Uh, mm -hmm. anyway, we've, we've overdone our time, Dr. Colleen uh, Kelly Mast. How do they find you again? Respectforyou.com. Respect the number four, the letter U. Respectforyou.com. Okay. Well, we're going on. We're, we're, I'll write to you soon, and we'll get you back on the show if it's okay. okay. But wow. What a great hour. Everybody, uh, until next week, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Remember, in, uh, the word ha in Hawaii means breath. Aloha means to give breath. This is what God did when he breathed his, his life into Adam. And when Jesus said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. And he breathed his Holy Spirit. And so till next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.